Look at the book of John that is through our studies. But we haven't looked at the prophets. What has the prophets got to offer us? The Bible we have in our hands is or involves books and is made up of four or five stages. The first part of the book is the what you called the Torah, which has to do with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, after the Torah, you have the prophets, the writings of the prophets. And after the writings of the prophets, you have what is called general writings, the writings which came from eminent children of Yahweh, like David, like Solomon, um, who wrote a book of Psalms, Ecclesiastes, uh, Songs of Solomon, and all the rest. Then after that, we have what you call the renewed covenant, which is called the Old Testament. The first three I mentioned, the Torah, the prophets, and the writings are called the scriptures. They constitute the scriptures. Added to that is the what is called the renewed covenant, which is called the New Testament. So those Torah, prophets, and uh, writings, which is the Old Testament, put them together with the New Testament, you have what is called the Bible. Now, you cannot understand the New Testament without sound knowledge of the Old Testament. And that is where Christianity got it wrong. Christianity thought that the Bible is all about the New Testament. And whatever they can pick from the Old Testament. Perhaps when they want to talk about tithe, offering, face fruits, and all the blessings. They can pick that from Old Testament, and after that, the Old Testament is cancelled, is, is destroyed, is nailed to the cross. You know, that's what they speak, that's what they preach. But that is false, that is fallacy. Because what the Bible called the law is all about Torah, it's all about telling you the first five books. In the Bible, in fact, some people call it first uh, five books of Moses. Moses didn't write any book. It was mm -hmm. Yahweh that wrote book, and those books were given to Moses in Mount Sinai mm -hmm. when the covenant commandment was given them. So after the the two tablets were handed to Moses, Yahweh packaged the you know the Torah, which is ex Genesis, Exodus. Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, the prophets, you have many of the prophets. You have what you call the minor prophets and the major prophets. Now, the minor prophets are not to say that they are small or few or that their writings are inconsequential. No. The minor means most of them were not full time. And though most of them were full time, but what they provided us was not so much massive. Now, the major prophets have massive messages and they were mainly full time full time 
When you compare somebody like Isaiah and Amos, who are the early prophets, the early prophets, you have Jonah, you have Amos, you have Hosea, you have Micah, you have Isaiah. They are called contemporary prophets. Contemporary in the sense that they were people that existed at a particular time or within a certain generation. So they spoke or they wrote the word of Yahweh. They conveyed the word of Yahweh, the mind of Yahweh to his people. So they were literally, you know, they penned down exactly what Yahweh told them to write and their messages were similar. So the, 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 the message they passed to the people of Israel, you know, pertain similar character or characteristics. And uh, they made sure that they delivered. So Isaiah was one of them, and Amos was one of them amongst the other three. The difference between Isaiah, who was a major prophet, and Amos was that Amos was a farmer. He said, I'm a husband man. <laughs> you say I'm a prophet and all that. But, well, I'm a prophet, he acknowledged. But he said his job was, you know, um, a, a farming. He was a farmer, a husband man. But Isaiah was major. He was called, sent out to the people of Judah. To declare the counsel, the oracle of Yahweh, to warn them, to guide them, to direct them, warn them to you know desist from sin. Mm. That's what he called them to do. Right. And all of them wrote in that aspect: Israel, Judah, desist from sin. Amen. Trust Yahweh, have faith in Yahweh, focus in Yahweh, then you will live. In the land peaceably. Mm -hmm. Nobody will harass you, nobody will overthrow you, nobody will because nations, empires were you know sweeping nations, clearing nations, absorbing nations. And uh, there was Israel, small Israel, in the midst of empire like Assyria. Assyria was the dominant nation, country ruling at that time was the empire governing the, the, the then known world as it were. So they wanted to catch the, all the northern side which they, they, they were you know part of and as well got into the middle where Israel dwelled and also down to the south where Egypt dwelled. So they, if they, they get the north and they get the middle east as it were and also grab Egypt that was within the south. They would have conquered the world. So that was the ambition of Assyria. So Assyria was, you know, an empire that was existing at that time. And their target was to overthrow the northern kingdom of Israel. The northern uh, kingdom was the ten tribe, which later you know, left to be nine tribes of Israel. And uh, consequently, to overthrow um, the kingdom of Judah. So the whole of Israel, they wanted to eliminate Israel. But Yahweh, through these prophets, was instructing them, if you hold on to me, if you trust me, if you have faith in me, if you have confidence in me, mm -hmm. you will not be conquered by anybody. Rather, you will rise above them, you will conquer them, and you possess the land. Not only the land of Israel, not only the land of, you know, the nations that we are encroaching against them, but to sweep the entire world and rule the entire world. So, Assyrians, we are people of Nineveh. You know where Jonah went? You know, Jonah was there in 793 to... Uh, 753 BC as a minor prophet. So when Yahweh told him to go to the nation of Nineveh, Nineveh is capital of Assyria, or it was the capital of Assyria then, and um, 
Assyria was not part of Israel, neither was it within the ten tribe or the, 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 the two or three tribes of Judah. But Yahweh, you know, called prophets as it were to nations of the world rising from Israel to spread the good news of Yahweh and to tell men to come out from wickedness. Wickedness is committing sin. Wickedness is going outside the way of Yahweh. So Assyria was in power. Their capital was Nineveh, about 755 BC. Now Assyria did everything to capture Israel, Samaria. Samaria was the capital of Israel at that time. Then they, they, they brought the kingdom of Israel to an end. It was the Assyrians that defeated Israel, brought them to an end. But Assyria themselves <laughs> were to go down because of their pervasiveness, their wickedness. They fell to Babylonian Empire in 612 BC, 612 BC. Because even as Jonah went there to preach to them, around that, um, before the 612 BC, they did not, you know, go far to use the, the call or the prompting of Yahweh through Jonah. So, that which Yahweh predicted or said he would do against them, he achieved through the Babylonians. He used the Babylonians to topple them. So Assyrians conquered Samaria, Israel, and the Assyrians themselves were conquered by Babylon, who later became another empire, empire that succeeded um, Assyria. Now, what was the work of the prophets generally? What was the work of the prophets? The work of the prophets we are mainly to, you know, as you have pastors today, as you have apostles today, as you have teachers today, as you have, you know, um, evangelists today, so you have pastors then. I mean, uh, so you have prophets then. Yahweh was the one appointing. Whether you are a pastor or a prophet, Yahweh has to appoint you. Yahweh has to choose you. Yahweh has to call you. If Yahweh did not call you, if you enter in and carry the Bible and begin to preach, the person will fail. The person will fail. That means the person called himself. If Yahweh did not say, come, I will show you what to do. Because when he called you, he will show you what to do. The, your message may not be the same as another person's message. Each of the prophets had a characterized message, a particular message. Yahweh want to put in his or her mouth to preach to his people, to, to warn his people, and to let his people to come out of the wicked ways. Because sin, sin is wickedness. Sin is breaking the commandments of Yahweh. Sin is transgression of the way of Yahweh. It, you know, breaking the the rules, the law of Yahweh. So, Yahweh through the prophets was bringing salvation beyond the border of Israel to nations. However, Yahweh was desirous you know, to bless nations through one set of people. That set of people was Israel. He wanted to bless the entire world using Israel. But, unfortunately, Israel did not, you know, uh, subscribe to Yahweh's calling, Yahweh's admonition, Yahweh's teaching, Yahweh's guide, guidance, Yahweh's, you know, um, 
way of life or lifestyle. Yahweh wanted them to have a particular lifestyle. So before an individual will qualify as a prophet or pastor or apostle or teacher or evangelist, the person, number one, must be lover of Yahweh. And you find out that love, Yahweh told us that love exhumes from his Ten Commandments. If you look at the commandments of Yahweh, particularly the Ten Commandments, the first five, as written in Exodus chapter 20, the first five is love for Yahweh. You should have no other gods be be beside me. You should not make any graven image of any nature, any manner, any character. You should not make it. You should not worship it. You should not bow to it. It's not, you know, carry it. Now, this, the third one that depicts his love is that you must not destroy his name, change his name. You must not call his name in vain. You should not profane his name. You should not blaspheme his name. So his name must be with you. His name is should be part of you. Inside your heart, you should not pollute it, you should not call it in vain, because the name is powerful. Unfortunately, the Israelites said to themselves, this name is so powerful that you can't call it by your mouth. Yahweh didn't tell them that. Yahweh didn't say that. But Yahweh says, you must know my name. You must call me by my name. You must praise me by my name. You must worship me by my name. By my name, you will be blessed. Israel, you will be blessed by my name. In fact, he told Moses to tell Aaron, the priests, and even pastors today, to, you know, pronounce blessings based on Yahweh's name. And because the, the, the blessings goes out based on his name, then because of his name, he will bless his people. So Yahweh instructed us to go by his name, call his name, worship him by his name, do everything and dwell in his name. But this was rejected. This is the, sec the third commandment. So they broke it, they destroyed it, they removed it. Particularly what is called Christianity today. Then the fourth of Yahweh's love is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11. It said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So they were not doing that. Rather, they choose their own day. Those who subscribe to Muslim, they choose Friday. Those who subscribe to Christianity, they choose Sunday, the first day. Those who subscribe to Hindu and so on, they choose any day. Some Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, any day they loved or they liked. Is that what? Yahweh commanded. What the Bible is requesting or looking from us to do is to subscribe to what Yahweh said, not what we think or what we, we, we are suggesting from our heart. No. The Bible commands us to do what Yahweh says. And that is abiding by the law, by the commandments. Now, the fifth is to love Yahweh, as our parents, honor your father and mother. So, Yahweh is our first, first parent, our father. So, we must honor Yahweh as we honor our earthly father and mother. So, that's why he put that fifth commandment. That fifth commandment is not just for father and mother that born us on the physical plane as human beings. But first and foremost, to Yahweh. So the first five commandments is called love for Yahweh. So these were what the prophets were preaching. Followed by the last five commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not, you know, tell lies, you shall not covet, and so on and so forth. So the five of them plus the five that is for Yahweh. Love for Yahweh and love for neighbor or brothers. 
if we do this, the entire Bible is summarized in these two laws. Law to obey or to love Yahweh and law to love our fellow human beings. That is what the Ten Commandments is all about. And that is what captures the entire Bible which we have from scriptures to you know, the renewed covenant which you call the Bible today. So this is basically what the prophets were teaching. And Isaiah, it was Isaiah that said to us that if anybody comes to you and will want to preach to you and the message is not based on the law, which I have just enumerated, which is all about love for Yahweh and love for neighbor, then do not subscribe to that message because there is no truth or there is no light in it. Isaiah chapter 20. Is it? Isaiah chapter 8, verse sorry. 20. Verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. It reads, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So you must preach the law and the testimony of the law. The same thing is revealed to us in Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. It must be by his testimony. For instance, all that Yahshua taught us, he hears from the Father and he taught us, they are all testimony. And all that the, the prophets released to us, gave to us, they are all testimony. And what Moses went to the Mount Sinai to bring to us, the Torah, the law, they are all law that Yahweh gave to Israel. So we must hold to the law and the testimony. The testimony being the record of what was revealed by the prophets, by Yahshua, to Israel. From where? From the law. So we must hold to that. And this is also exemplified or foretold in Leviticus 20 verse 6, Isaiah 58 verse 8. So it must all be from the word. The law, the Torah, and the word. The word was made flesh, which is our Hamashiach, Yahshua. Yahshua is the word, the law. And the Bible said that he is the end of the law, or the purpose, or the goal. That if you hold to the law, the word, then you, 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 you are obedient. It describes you as obedient, obedient servant, obedient fellow. So these prophets we are chosen based on the love they have for Yahweh. You must love Yahweh. That is number one. Number two, you must obey Yahweh. Yahweh's word. Yahweh's voice. Whatever Yahweh says, you must obey. That is what qualifies one to be a prophet. Another thing that qualifies one to be a prophet is one must be committed, ready to receive tests. Tests. Because as a prophet, you must be tested. As a servant, in fact, as a believer, you must be tested. Whether you're a prophet, whether you're a teacher, whether you're an apostle, whether you're an evangelist, whether you're a floor member, back bencher member, everybody must be tested. Before we enter into the kingdom, we must be tested. On what are we tested? On the word of Yahweh, on obedience to Yahweh, on faith. For Yahweh. Then, as a prophet, you must be selfless. You must be selfless. It's not about you, 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 but about Yahweh, about your neighbor, about your brethren, 
about <coughs> the people that Yahweh send you to preach to. You must love them. You must seek after their welfare. You must seek after their spiritual life. You must seek after... <coughs> you don't have to live in ego, in self, in fame, in prosperity. I want to be better than all of them. I want to be number one. I want to be heard. I want to be seen. Such a person can never be called by Yahweh. You can now see by all these why those who call themselves pastors, evangelists in Christianity today, who go eat all for their own stomach, for their own benefit, for their own well-being, for them to be noticed, for them to be seen, for them to be seen as the richest person or persons in the world. Those are not pastors. Those are not evangelists. Those are not the people that Yahweh wants. Because they have already missed the mark. So if they miss the mark, how can they fit in to bring the people to the knowledge of Yahweh, to the wisdom of Yahweh, to obedience of Yahweh? Mm. And finally, to be a prophet, one must give all allegiance all submission, all obedience, we have mentioned before, to Yahweh. You must be ready to hear his voice. You must be ready to do it and live as example. And live as example. Because many, we are, you know, the book people read. Our life characteristics, our ways of life must, you know, portray what we preach, what we profess. And that's what Yahweh wants us to be. Yahweh wants to make us to be like the Bible. When people see you, they see the way of Yahweh, the truth of Yahweh. So, Isaiah prophesied Yahweh's message, or messages, to Judah in particular, then to Israel, and by extension to the world from Jerusalem. Yahweh commissioned Isaiah to his task. Isaiah had a task. What was the task? Preach to Judah. Warn Judah. Straight to their king. Warn their kings. Warn their nobles. Warn their big men. Warn the poor. Warn the rich. Tell them to desist, to come out from sin. Follow the way of Yahweh. Fear Yahweh. That was the major task of Isaiah. Another task that was given to Isaiah was to showcase to the people the consequences of sin. That in as much as they dwell in sin, it has consequences. And the consequences if they continue to break Yahweh's law or covenant, they will perish. They will die. They will lose their land. They will lose their life. They will lose their land. They will be scattered all over the world. They will be scattered all over the world. Then Isaiah has a task to communicate to the people that there is hope in future. That Yahweh is going to give them a deliverer. Isaiah was one man who showcased the power of Yahweh in his word. That whatever Yahweh says must come to pass. For instance, Isaiah was only one man who went deeper and deeper, accurately prophesied the future of Israel, the future king of Israel, Yahshua, Isaiah was the only person who showed the present, the future, to the deepest level. Other prophets they did, but Isaiah went to the nitty gritty of how Yahshua is going to be born in this world. 
suffer his first coming and second coming, Isaiah was the only prophet that opened it up, showed it as it were, and it came to pass accurately. Came to pass the birth of the king of five. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. I know you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. So that cut across all the prophets. And that cut across pastors. And that is why it is Yahweh that choose, Yahweh that brings, before an individual is born in this world, Yahweh will know whether that person is going to do his will, going to do his work, and what part of his work the person will be capable to do. Some are fitted to do his work as a pastor, some are fitted to do his work as a prophet, so I fitted to do his work as evangelist. These have different duties to perform. All these, you know, people of Yahweh. Whom he called, he will bestow a particular assignment. So who is Isaiah? Isaiah's name, the Hebrew name of Isaiah is Yeshaya. Yeshaya is like you are calling Yahshua. In fact, the meaning of the name is the same. So, Isaiah represents the coming Yahshua. And in English, it just simply means Yahweh saves. The meaning of Isaiah is Yahweh saves. The same thing to say that Yahshua is Yahweh is our salvation, or Yahweh saves. As I said before, Isaiah is the only prophet that deeply saw present and future. Isaiah covers topical issues, repentance from national sin. Israel, we are sinning collectively, we are sinning individually, but as a nation, Isaiah captured it, and he was resting his message on the kings. The kings at that time, that was during the period of Isaiah, was Jotan, Hezekiah, Ahaz, and Manasseh. Now, without wasting much time, let's look at chapter 1 to, you know, begin our foundation. Just chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. So let us see the first message of Isaiah to the people of Judah. He was called from Judah and to preach to Judah, to warn Judah, though it cut across the entire Israel. But first and foremost, Judah. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah. So, who were the kings in the days of Isaiah the prophet? You have Uzziah, you have Jotham, you have Ahaz, you have Hezekiah, kings. These are the kings of Judah. In fact, the story of Hezekiah is so much reverberating in Isaiah chapter 30 and 37, even up to 38, which captured the fate of this man called Hezekiah. So Isaiah, you know, penned it down and told us what transpired. That during this time, this king didn't succumb to Assyrians. Because the, the, the Assyrians, their target was to overthrow not only the northern kingdom. Because after they succeeded in destroying the northern kingdom, their target was to capture 
Judah. But um, they fail. Assyria failed to Babylonians. So they couldn't capture Judah. And um, Hezekiah was a stumbling block to them. But it was during the reign of Babylon that Judah failed. Because the, subs the subsequent kings were not able to abide with Yahweh. They were not able to abide with the warnings of the prophets that were sent to them. So prophets, in a nutshell, were agents of Yahweh to warn his people from deviating from his word. If they obey his word, they will succeed. They will live happily. They will live in a stable life condition. Nobody will harass them. Nobody will take them away from the land. And they will be fruitful in the land. So verse 1 captures who Isaiah was. He was the son of Amos, the man called Amos. And he preached concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And this was in the days of Uzziah, the king Uzziah, king Jotam, king Ahaz, and king Hezekiah. Now he began, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For Yahweh has spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Now this verse 2 captures what Yahweh started speaking right from time to today. The word of prophets never changed. The prophet's word or admonition or warning was never destroyed or removed. It is the same as they began and the same today and the same tomorrow. It is the word of Yahweh. It wasn't their own word. What they preached was what they heard from Yahweh. And Yahweh here cried that the whole, not only Judah, but the whole world should give ear to the spoken word of Yahweh. And Isaiah was screaming, not only to Judah, but to the whole world, so that the whole world will hear. When Yahweh will now stand up against his people, Judah will not have an excuse. Yahweh will have witness from other nations that indeed he warned his people. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. This is what is happening even today. Yahweh created us. Yahweh brought us into the world. In fact, this verse 2 is like the key of the message. But he that created us, brought us into this world as our father, our first parent, which is the fifth commandment. How have we honored him? How have we obeyed him? How have we lived, you know, to listen to his instruction? That is the problem. That is the problem of humanity. The, we continue to rebel against the instruction, against the word, against the Torah, against the commandments, against Yahweh himself. Resist him. Verse 3. The ox knows his owner and the donkey his master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken Yahweh. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away, backward. Mm -hmm. See their sin. They left Yahweh. When we tell people that the name of Yahweh is not the Lord, it's not God, it's not Jesus, they think we made it up. They think this is the scripture. The prophets, right? Even before Isaiah, these people have left Yahweh. He said they went backward. What do you understand backward? They went to Baal. They went to 
lives of the ancients, your four 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 fathers, the life that they lived, what they believed, that was what Israel did. The same people he brought from Egypt, the same people he brought with mighty hand, they left him. And they began to follow another. They began to follow the gods of Mesopotamia or Chaldi. They went backwards. And Yahweh never, never liked it. They brought anger against themselves, the anger of Yahweh. Verse 5. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. That is Israel. The whole head is sick. Once somebody leaves Yahweh's word or way, the person is not only sick, the person is dying. And the person will die if the person doesn't repent and mm. come back to Yahweh. Verse 6. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Yahweh foresee here in advance what will happen to them. They have incurred rot of Yahweh. They have incurred, because departing from the word of Yahweh mm. is to inherit is, to, is, is for one to acquire trouble, suffering, anguish, pain, sicknesses, diseases, infirmities. Call it anything. Whatever that will bring death is what the person will be facing. So that's why I said they have encountered, you know, wounds, bruises, sores that can never be healed. All those are injuries that human beings literally, you know, bring to himself or herself when they go outside the way of Yahweh. Your country is desolate. Yahweh was telling them in advance, Judah, you are going to go into extinction. You are going to go into destruction. You are going to be destroyed. You are going to be removed. You are going to be, you are going, you are no longer going to be answer your name. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers. Yahweh was seen in advance nation that was coming. Assyria was advancing. Assyria was advancing. Though Assyria was removed by Babylonia. But when Babylonia set in, that was it. They were the nation that are going to destroy. Burn their, their city. Burn their land. Destroy what they have. Strangers devour the land. And took the land. And inhabit in the land. So he was telling them that the land is desolate, overthrown by strangers. These strangers were the Babylonians that at the end of the day conquered them. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, except Yahweh of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Isaiah is telling them, well, because you will not hear. No matter how the word is preaching to your ears, you will not hear. No matter how you are warned, you will not hear. After you are swept away, by mercy of Yahweh, he will leave a remnant. While you are scattered abroad, while you are scattered into the land of Babylon, you are going to be left few. And that few will come back in the land. And that will cause you to continue to exist. But stretching the message, moving the message forward, you found out that even when they went to Babylon and came back, they inherited even the worst situation. Because their land by the time they came back was inhabited by the Gentile world that we are worshipping, idols. The Babylonians, the Assyrians, they were occupying the whole of the places and they had introduced Baal, infected the land with their fetishness as we have today in foreign land, in, in Gentile world. 
We think that in Gentile world, we are saints. As a Christian, you are saint. As a Muslim, you are saint. No, 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 no. What you are just enjoying is the idols of those lands. Because as an Israelite, you are different. You are not like those Gentile world. You don't worship their idol. You don't preach or enter into their own message or gospel. Or No, no, no. no. They don't know your way. They don't know his way. So once you enter into their land, if they don't absorb you, you absorb them. But there's no way you absorb them because right from your own land as an Israelite, you have left the way of Yahweh. So what they have done when they entered into the world, the nations of the world as we have it in the Gentile world today, is to flock and follow the Gentile idols. Because we have gathered that information, understand the knowledge of the Gentile world right from the land of Israel. Have it been scattered based on forsaking Yahweh into the, the Gentile world, then they expanded their knowledge in hidden idols, gods, lords, um, Jehovah's, and the Jesus. That is what happened to Israel, even Israel of today. So, people of Judah, though they will be scattered. By the time they come back, the land will be polluted with idols. So no matter how they will think they have been refined, they will be worse for it. So they were not able to save the situation. That made us to know that when Yeshua came, because he met them in that land, when he came the first time, he told them that their father they were worshipping was Satan. John chapter 8 verse 44. And that was true, even to the point and to the time he left them, he ascended into heaven. Verse 10, hear the word of Yahweh, you rulers of Sodom, give ear unto the law of our Elohim, ye people of Gomorrah. Who was he calling Sodom and Gomorrah? Judah at that time had turned to Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was a Gentile world that never knew Yahweh, never knew his covenant way. So Israel had become Sodom and Gomorrah. Once you leave the way of Yahweh, the covenant way of Yahweh, you become a Gentile. You become, you know, the people that Yahweh abhor because they don't know him. They don't follow his way. You can see how Christianity missed the mark. Islam or Muslims miss the mark. Jewish people who profess Judaism miss the mark. If you do not keep in Abraham's way, Abraham never had a religion. The religion, if you if you want to bring in the word religion, what Abraham followed was the way of Yahweh, covenant way. Remember, Abraham, Yahweh made covenant with um, Yahweh. Yahweh said, you must follow that covenant. You must follow, because that covenant is where the promise was built. So, the same covenant up to the children of Israel in Mount Sinai was what was handed to us up to today. So, having been scattered from the land of Israel into the Gentile world, Everybody left that covenant way and embraced the Gentile gospel. The Gentile gospel within the Christianity is to follow Catholicism. And Catholicism do not subscribe to covenant way. They reject the covenant way. They don't know Yahweh. They don't they they, they infect all the whole garment of their worship. In idol, idol worship, graven image. Jesus is designed in image, marble stone, in wood, the cross. That is how it is depicted. But that is not Yahshua. Yahshua never go that way. Yahshua can never be worshipped or be seen on the, you know, images. He said, you should not go with image. 
Yahshua doesn't go with image. They removed his name, profaned his name, so they don't call his name. You can see where everybody is today. So whether whatever religion you have been into, you have been following the way of Satan. Satan goes with religion. Satan points to people to the way of idol. And doing idol is bowing to Satan because Satan take glory, take worship via idols. So that is the way that the Gentile world follow. And Yahweh say, come out from them, come out from them, separate yourself from them, do not pollute yourself. But that is where we are, all human beings in the Gentile world. But there are remnants. And that is why Yahweh is fighting and making sure that we come out from the Gentile worlds and follow him. And glory be to Yahweh, thanks to Yahshua, who has touched I and you today. We now begin to ask, where is the covenant commandment? Where is the law? Where is Torah? Where is the way of Yahweh? Where is that way Abraham that Yahweh called out from the Gentile world? Where is that way he followed? Where is that way he worshipped Yahweh? So today we are called back to the way that Abraham was called. To the way Isaac was called. To the way Israel, Jacob was called. To the way that depicts the covenant commandment given to them in Mount Sinai that we must follow. To the way that Yahshua came to show us and renew the covenant and ask us to continue in it. So that is what we are keen in today. That is what we are following. Anything outside that is religion. Mm -hmm. And that religion is Satan. Satan plants it. Satan makes sure it's like a bed. Just put a bed in a, a hook, drop it inside the water. Fishes will just run after it. So religion is Satan's bed to grab as many as he can so that he will chain them and lock them up and die with them because they will all be burnt and be destroyed together. Yahweh has given us the way. We must follow the way, the right way. That is why Yahshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. So Yahshua is the embodiment, the custodian of what is called the law, the Torah, the word of Yahweh. Him we must follow. That is the way. We are not into religion. Come out from the religion of this world. Or else somebody will get the fire which Yahweh is pronouncing. Verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Says Yahweh. I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and of the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. Yeah. Yahweh prescribed the way for them to follow. But they were following him ceremonially. Lip service. Not from the heart. You must follow the way, the law, the commandment, but from the heart. The heart means you must be faithful and you must be obedient. Mm -hmm. And once you're obedient, you do, you are thorough. You follow what he says, not what you think. Not what you think. It must be what he says. Mm -hmm. That is what makes you whom you are. That's what makes you servant of Yahweh. That's what makes you an Israelite. That's what, what makes you a covenant keeper. That, that is what makes you a believer. That's what makes you an Israelite. That's how Israelites are identified. That's how Israelites are known. They are covenant keepers. They are faithful servants. They are faith fruits. They are children of Yahweh. Precious. They are precious. So don't enter into ceremonial service. Because you can engage or follow the way, the covenant way, yet you are not there. That was what happened to Judah. That was what happened to Israel. Because they were the people that the covenant commandment was given to. But why was Yahweh saying all these things? Because they were wishy-washy. They were following him on lip service. They were following him ceremonially. They were not thorough. They were not listening to his voice. 
they were not following his commandment squarely as he gave it to them. Follow it as he gave it to you, then you will find out that you are original. You are number one. He will not fail you. Amen. Yahweh will fail somebody who do not follow his way. Because he will simply walk away from the person. He will simply al al allow the person to the person will be abandoned. Verse 12. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to trade my corpse? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. And the new moons and sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Yeah, when they come together to worship, to serve Yahweh, they come in vain because it's not from the heart because that they are not doing it believing yahweh having faith in yahweh even on the sabbath day even the new moons the moon new moon days they keep they were doing it ceremonially it's not from heart mm -hmm. new moon day is a day you when you spot the moon crescent what you do is to thank yahweh bless yahweh with all your heart because it showcases that he is the creator. When you see the moon, you say, Ah, Yahweh, you are the one that created heaven and earth. You are the one. Thank you for giving me the benefits of life. That is what you do in the new, new moon day. Because there he gives you time and season. New moon is to showcase, you know, time, season. This is the time for this. This is the time for this. This is season for this. This is season for that. Showing you or telling you that Yahweh is the creator of everything. And everything apportioned in its own time and season. Sabbath is the day you worship him. And Yahweh is saying, what is the need for you to assemble yourself on the Sabbath? When you come there, you come there ceremonially. When you come to worship him, you do it wishy-washy. You do it haphazardly. You do it, oh, let us fulfill your own righteousness. No, 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 no. Sabbath is a, a holy day, honorable day. Of all the days he created, it is the highest day. Because even Yahweh himself rested on that day. It's a day of rest. That is the meaning of Sabbath. A day you done tool, you are walking tools. A day you do not walk. That is, you rest. All your walking implements, you lay them down. You sit yourself by the side of Yahweh. You hear him. You listen to him. You play music to him. You dance with him. Rejoice with him. You bless him. You praise him. That is the day you do it. You don't do your own thing that day. You don't do your own thing. You don't do your own pleasure. It's not a day you go and watch football. Or you play football. It's not a day you dance disco. Kokoma. No, it's not a day you do all kind of things that of your own. No. So on that day, abandon everything and everything will be to the glory of Yahweh. Even when you are blessing somebody, when you are praying for somebody, when you are healing somebody on that day, it is to the glory of Yahweh. Everything you must do must be to the glory of Yahweh on that day. So these Jewish people, then we are doing all these things ceremonially, not to the glory of Yahweh. As, as a result, he said to them that all that they were doing was in vain. Their sacrifice, everything was like abomination before his eyes, complete abomination. Because they were even bringing the ideas, the, the knowledge, the ways of the Gentile idol worshippers, even into the assembly. On the day of Sabbath, said, No, 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 it doesn't work that way. You won't follow me that way. Verse 14 You are new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hurts. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. See, all these things are something that they're supposed to be doing. But because they don't do it as Yahweh prescribed and from their heart, Yahweh said, All those things are, you know, wearying him. They don't give him glory. Instead of giving him glory, it becomes mockery, becomes something that makes him unhappy. He doesn't like it. You must do it according to his will. 
verse 15. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When they are praying, spread their hand. Yahweh says he will not look at them because they are people that have gone backward. Ye, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. They were murder. They, they were murderers. When you remove evil from you, when you stop doing evil, you have removed sin. So stop sinning. That's what he's wanting them to do. Stop sin. Sin is your problem. Stop sin. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says Yahweh. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Yahweh has the belly of mercy, love. The bowel of his mercy is great. Upon that stray, upon going backward, upon sinning, upon you know, flocking with the world, the Gentile world. He said, come, 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 come. Stop all those foolishness. Stop all those wickedness. Stop sinning against me and against yourself. I will cleanse you no matter how your sin is. No matter how terrible it is, I will cleanse you. The same call of Judah is the same call to us today. What are you doing about it? Yahweh says, have a rethink of all those evil you are doing. All those wickedness. Come back to me. Return to me. I will cleanse you. How does he cleanse us? Yahshua has come to do it. At the tree, he gave up himself. His blood was shed. Poured because of us. The blood does the cleansing today. If you hear him, if you believe him, if you repent, if you say no to sin, the blood will take over. If you submit yourself to Yahshua, and they immerse yourself in the name of Yeshua. The baptism you had in, in Christendom will never save you. We never bring restoration. We never bring pardon. When you enter into baptism in the name of Yeshua, it brings pardon. It brings remission of sin. Remission of sin is pardon. Your sin is pardoned. And you are now brought into life and ways of Yahweh. And Yahshua the Son gives you his spirit to do what? To cleanse you. To prepare you for the kingdom. For the salvation that he has kept for you. Verse 19. If you be willing and obedient. This is what Yahweh is you know, looking from us. Willingness to serve him. Faith to follow him. Obedient to hear his word and to keep them. If you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, disobey, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. Let's stop here so far. Yahweh is telling us today. This is history. History of Israel. History of Judah. That happened some 600 years. 700 BC before even Yahshua came Yahshua came 2000 years ago but this happened about when from 700 to 600 and something BC before Yahshua came is he still talking to those people no those generations are gone a long time ago but this the world is still living speaking to the children Children, children, up to today, up to tomorrow. That if we, the children, here, stop rebelling, what our fathers did in the land of Judah, in the land of Israel, because all Israelites are in the Gentile world. We have become Gentile in one way or the other. We have embraced Gentile. Their lifestyle, their way of talking, their way of, you know, Living their attitude, their character, their manner, everything they do, their religion. We have even followed their religion. Say, so come out from them. Repent. Change. Stop being stubborn. If you are obedient and willing to follow Yahshua, he said, we will eat the good of the land. Even in this Gentile world, we will live without weeping, without crying. 
When sickness comes, he will answer us. He will hear us. He will remove it. When the enemy comes, he will chase them away. Because we call on him. Because we have his name. Do you know that every believer in Yeshua has the name of Yahweh in his forehead? That is your mark. Because you are, you are a carrier of Yahweh. You are a carrier of Yeshua. When you call, he hears, he answers. You are separate. You've been separated from the world. You've been separated from the Gentile. Stop rebelling. If we stop rebelling, Yahweh will come handy. Yahweh will hear us. Yahweh will bless us. Yahweh will meet us at the point of our knees. And that way, we will, you know, be part and parcel of Yahweh. We will be his children as he, he says we should be. So let us, from today, as we have heard from this Isaiah chapter 1, let us learn to listen to him. Amen. Let us learn to begin to have a change. Change of heart. Repent from our sins. Baptize in Yeshua. If you have not baptized in Yeshua, your following him will be in vain. But if you baptize in Yeshua and begin to obey, willingly follow him, obey him, then you will inherit the land. You will enjoy the land. When Yeshua comes, your name will be found in the book of life. And you will be part of those who will enjoy the new heaven and the new earth. May Yahweh bless you. May Yahweh strengthen you. May Yahweh give you grace Amen. to follow him to the end. Amen. 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 I will love you, Yahweh.